coming with me. Yay! I have this ready. Hopefully we caught lunch. Barracuda! Yay! A lot of people don't eat barracuda, but I do. I'm Asian and I've eaten lots of barracudas in the Caribbean and I'm still alive today. It's not a super big barracuda and there's that one reef um, disease. I can't remember the name of it. So, a lot of people don't eat barracuda because of cigatera poisoning. I finally remember the name of that. Just set um, off from Beaver Reef. There's some wind and it's supposed to be flat the next few days. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe we'll just go to Cairns and yay, we caught another fish, barracuda. Great white fish. Slimy as ever. I've got to try and skin it now. Learning how to do all this. Natural style. Don't cut your bit, bits and pieces. Yeah, yeah, I'll show, I'll show. <laughs> today's cooking lesson on selling vessel tack is fish and chips. Steve taught us how to make fish and chips and we love it. It's delicious. Not the healthiest but love it. So Paul caught the barracuda today so I sort of put it on chill on the, in the freezer. It's only been two hours so it's not completely frozen. It's still cold. So what I do for the batter is flour and um, beer but I couldn't find any beer because we don't really drink beer on board so in lieu of beer I did a, maybe one one and a half to two teaspoons of yeast and water a little bit hot water and I never measure anything so everything else you have to YouTube so I might have one and a half two cups of um, flour so, Paul likes this consistency. Or thicker. Or thicker. And we are doing chips, french fries, so I boiled this already. So it's a little smushy. I never get it right, so it's hit and miss. And we're gonna put olive oil in this thing, because mm -hmm. pan, because usually we do it on the wok, but it takes a lot of oil, so we're gonna try it, this. And Paul will be the one, um, putting it into the batter and then getting the heat and Paul will explain that it's very important to get the heat correctly so your batter is nice golden and crisp if not it'll just be soggy this is what Steve taught us so he taught us many things okay on my turn to do the dangerous bit naked with hot oil real fun I actually will put my apron on oh do you know where I put your apron down there yep you told me now, while it's fresh meat, I cut it into nice, easy size, batterable, and you, know, you get a good rounding of crispness on it. Mm -hmm. We like that size. So, first thing is get the oil happening. Don't leave it unattended. The first time Christine did it was up at flash point, uh, 220 something rather degrees. So then this won't boil. What's wrong? It was almost boiling. And the other thing is, our little thermometer, <laughs> don't leave it unattended hanging out the side yeah. of the pot. <laughs> As somebody I know does. 165 is what I was taught, and that seems... 165 degrees. So 165 degrees Celsius. That seems to get it golden and crispy without the soggy center. You know, um, and much over 175, you'll get burnt. Uh, deep frying it's scary. I've gotten splattered many times so I don't like it. Paul's cooking the potatoes sort of red shape. Look at the fish and chips looks delicious but Paul wasn't happy with my batter he wanted it thicker so I added um, flour. Naturist. <laughs> yep. Okay. Sorry. Right, these are the first lot in. Four minutes is all it's taken. Four if minutes. You, if ever you think you've got the oil too hot before you add or take in, put in or take out stuff, turn the flame off. Bit of a yeah. pain, but it stops having a flash up. Look at how yummy that looks. Mm, whoa. Yeah, the sound of the... Oh, and there's the chef's, chef's special. 
potatoes often bubble up worse than ever, so make sure you've got a fire blanket at hand or, a, oh, lid, or yes. a lid ready to put on. We have a fire blanket under my potatoes, but when you put your batter, your mix in, just gently dunk it in beside the others and then maybe even take it out until it coats a little. If you just plop it straight in, it'll stick to the other pieces and then it's really hard to separate. But if you gently submerge each time and let it just get a little coating on it, then they won't stick to the pan and they won't stick to each other. That's good advice because I never did that before and it always stuck to the bottom and all the batter came out. This is looking good. This thicker mix of batter is batter, 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 batter. Did you understand that? Humble up a bit, it's batter, 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 batter. The golden brown, I did have to rotate them once because there was not quite enough oil. Now before I take them off the pan or out of the pan for the last time, I turn the flame off just to reduce the risk of a fire. In case I drop and it splashes over or anything like that. Now they are looking pretty damn good all round. Thicker batter, so you can, I don't know, it's a little darker. Maybe the temperature is up a bit more, but there's just a thicker coating of batter which is better for me. I like better, better, better. Lighting is dark because I have candlelight on. Set the ambiance. Love to eat with candlelight. If you like to see Christine channel, Thunder please from down click under. subscribe. I'll show you more <laughs> fun, crazy, adventure I'm not travel dancing things. now. I know. But it's hilarious. So, our $6 Headache. Headache in a bottle. I don't get a headache. Olay! Olay! Mmm. Sparkling wine and a platter of fish and chips. And we eat very healthy most of the time, but mmm. Fish and chips a lot of the times is what we like to. So rosé, sparkling wine, and freshly caught barracuda just two hours ago. And fish and chips. Cheers. Cheers. One heck of a cheap, easy Aussie meal done in a romantic way. I mean, look at this. Fresh fish, gorgeous woman, candlelight dinner, champagne. What more could a guy ask for? Cheers. Here's to living.